Okay, welcome everyone to today's Master Seller webinar, which is going to be a little bit less on selling and a little bit more on marketing. We're going to talk about our Gone Google Marketing campaign, which we launched earlier this year. And this is part of our corporate marketing effort to increase awareness of Google Ads and increase adoption of the product. My name is Michelle Lasowski. I'm a partner marketing manager for Google Ads. And I'm also joined today by Dana Nguyen, who is a Apps Partner Marketing Manager for our EDU edition. But she also helps manage our Google at Work Twitter profile. So she's here today to help answer any questions that you all might have about Twitter uh, and give you a little bit of insight into what you as a business can do when you're on Twitter. Uh, just a reminder that we will be taking questions throughout, but please make sure that you put all questions in the Q&A chat box in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, and that's going to help us keep track of all the questions. Uh, normally, these master seller webinars go for an hour, but I think today's will be much shorter. I'm anticipating maybe between 20 and 30 minutes, depending on questions. So if any of you have a meeting or anything you have to get to at 1030, we should be wrapping up right around then. Quick reminder about the solution provider site, apps.getportal.com. We are recording today's webinar, and I'll be posting a recorded version of the webinar and today's presentation on the site. Um, likely before the end of the day. Um, so let's get started. Our agenda, we're going to first do campaign at a glance. We're going to walk through um, at a high level the Gone Google Marketing campaign and what we've been doing to reach out to the community and let them know about Google Apps. Uh, then we're going to be talking about the individual components and the messaging around this campaign. And lastly, we're going to talk about how we're empowering fans to spread the word and how all of our partners can spread the word as well. And that's when we're going to start talking a little bit about Twitter and how we're using social media channels. Uh, so first off, as I mentioned earlier, this campaign launched earlier this year. Most of it launched in Q2 of 2009, but we are slowly rolling out more and more each month. Uh, the focus of this campaign is really on our customers. So. It's really part of our brand to let customers speak for us. And the enterprise space, it's especially great to show that businesses of all sizes are adopt adopting Google Apps and seeing success. So letting customers spread their word for us and highlighting key customers has been a great way for us to really push our message um, and make sure that we're touting the benefits of apps, but we're also letting our customers do that for us. And we want to make sure that it's easy for our customers to spread the word. And so a big part of this campaign, um, as you'll see when we get into the components of it, is to make sure that we have a number of channels our customers and businesses can use to, to reach out and spread the word. Um, we have a lot of loyal fans out there who use the consumer version of our products. They use Gmail. They use Calendar, Docs. They use all those products every day. And those products are bundled into Google Apps. So we found that. It's a great way to connect with organizations through the employees um, and through the people who really use our products and, and know what the benefits really are. So first, we launched billboards in four US cities. We also created a number of banner ads that are highlighting business and IT-related frustrations. We have landing pages that we've developed for each of the audiences we're targeting with this campaign. And then as mentioned, we're using a number of social media channels, especially Twitter, to spread the words ourselves and empower our partners, our fans, and our current customers to spread the word. And then lastly, we're actually going to be creating Gone Google merchandise just to help leverage the momentum for this and get all of our fans excited. Uh, none of that swag is available quite yet, but um, I've been told that it will be available in the Google Store very soon. So you might want to check back there in the near future. So that's the campaign at a glance. And, and now let's get into the various components and the messaging. So who are we targeting? Uh, under the Gone Google umbrella, there's a number of kind of sub-initiatives going on here, and it, it really depends on who specifically we're targeting. Uh, business and IT decision makers tend to be who we focus on most. Uh, we've certainly focused on them more and more um, the past few years, and 
with the launch of products such as Google Apps Sync for Outlook and the Lotus Notes migration tool, we also pushed uh, a couple new resource centers and kind of pushed our focus on encouraging businesses that are currently on Exchange and Lotus Notes to switch to Google Apps. And then you'll also see that we have users and employees in the mix. And, you know, I know that they're a little bit more atypical to be targeting in an enterprise type campaign, but this is a big part of our efforts to really, you know, get customers to evangelize for us and really reach out to our fans and make sure that they're spreading the word. So how are we reaching them? Um, as mentioned, we showed billboards in four major U.S. cities. Uh, I was going to show a quick video. Unfortunately, I, I realized that that's not going to work very well um, with WebEx. Hopefully, in the future, we'll be able to show videos. Uh, but for now, you just have this screen capture of the video we showed on day one. But these videos, um, I'm sorry, the, the billboard we showed on day one. And these billboards were actually changed each day of the month, and they highlighted a customer's conversion to Google Apps and kind of how they came to, to see why one would want to go Google. So the, I'm going to get to a landing page later on that's going to have a link to this, this video, but it is posted on YouTube for you all to take a look. Uh, and it was also posted in our recent announcement feed, which is linked to from the solution provider site. Um, so next let's talk about what we're doing specifically for the Exchange and Lotus Notes users. First, we created banner ads to talk to both Exchange and Notes customers uh, and really highlight the frustrations. We, we talked to customers who have recently switched from both these products, and we asked them kind of why they switched and what some of the key frustrations were before they switched. And we really tried to highlight them here in this banner campaign. Um, not surprisingly, costs were uh, a critical reason that both Lotus and Exchange users switched, but we also found for uh, Lotus News users, especially universal access, is really an issue. So our second banner here, Teaching My CEO How to Check Email, made me go Google. Um, you know, in talking to some of the IT managers, we found that it was just a huge frustration having to help CEOs and other employees access email from the road. And then lastly, spam, I think, is one that we can all relate to, and it certainly came up when we were talking um, to both Exchange and Lotus customers. Um, so as mentioned, we created resource centers for Exchange and Lotus Notes users. Um, Google.com slash app slash Exchange uh, is the first one, and then Google.com slash app slash Notes. Both these sites contain um, a lot of resources to help customers switch and make the switch easier. So we have uh, white papers, data sheets, and information on a lot of the new products we've launched, like uh, Microsoft, uh, Google Apps Sync for Outlook and our Lotus Notes migration tool. Um, these sites are also a great way for your marketing teams to see how we're positioning apps versus Exchange and Lotus and the benefits that we see for each of these audiences. And again, we've talked to a lot of our customers, and we've done a lot of research to really pinpoint what the benefits are that are convincing these two key audiences to switch. So I think taking a look at these resource centers and reviewing our messaging can really help you when you're selling and marketing to, to these audiences. Now in line with our theme for the Larger Gone Google campaign, you're going to find a number of examples of customers that have switched from Exchange and Lotus. Um, they go through why they adopted apps and the benefits they've realized. Uh, and I think they're really powerful tools to helping convince other users to go Google and make the switch to Google Apps. Um, you'll see here we've highlighted Fairchild Semiconductor, Avago, Second Wind, Serena, and Johnson Diversity. The resource sites promote all of these customers, and they also show others. And you can see from the slide here that we have video, them in video form, PDF, case study format. There's, there's just a lot of great resources here that I think you can easily repurpose on your websites or that you can use when you're presenting to customers. Um, you'll see on the Exchange site as well that we have third-party reports on cloud computing. I think we all know that selling the concept of the cloud is a critical component of selling Google Apps. And so these reports should really help arm you with the information you need to make the case. Um, and so I just I really want to remind everyone and encourage everyone that you can and should be utilizing these resources. They're there for our customers, and 
you know, they're also there for you. You can download these PDFs if you want to distribute them in one-on-one -on -one meetings with your clients. You can post these PDFs on your websites, on your blogs. Um, you can use them when you go to events. Uh, the, the videos and case studies, again, are especially compelling when showcasing that other large customers have made the switch and they're seeing a lot of success with it. So I really encourage you to, to go through both these resource centers and make sure that uh, you're, you're maximizing all the, the resources that are available. Okay, so the other two people we're targeting are business decision makers and users and employees. And the approach with both these audiences is going to be a little bit more focused on their usage of the consumer version of the products because um, of both apps and Exchange and, and Lotus Notes if they're currently on those platforms because I think that's what these particular audiences can relate most to. Um, so again, for our banner ad campaigns, we highlighted frustrations that are really common among users of the products. So you can see here the 17th version of that attachment made me go Google. We also talk about scheduling and, and how much easier it is to, to schedule with calendar. And lastly, the your inbox is full error made me go Google. So again, frustrations that are typically going to be experienced by the end user. And then for these audiences, we created a gone Google landing page, which is google.com slash apps at work. And this is kind of the primary gone Google landing page. It was uh, premiered on the banner ads I just showed you and on the billboards that we showed in, in those major cities. So this is kind of where we're pushing a lot of the gone Google traffic. And you can see there join over 1.75 million businesses that have gone Google. So again, still very customer focused on those who have gone Google and really spreading the word about why you'd want to go Google. Um, so the next component is going to be empowering fans to spread the word. And I'm going to go back to the google.com slash apps at work page really quickly. You can't see it in the screen capture, but at the very bottom of this page is a link to a landing page, and, and that link says spread the word. Uh, so it, it's linking off to a landing page that is much more uh, in user focused and is going to empower our fans to spread the word. Um, so this is the page I'm talking about. Join the movement. Spread the word, go Google. And there's three components I, I want to highlight on this page that I think are really key. And I would really encourage all of our partners to also use the resources on this page. Um, so one, one piece of feedback I've gotten from our sales team, and I'm sure all of you have found in trying to sell apps, is that um, especially as the company gets a little bit larger, it's not just the IT decision maker that you have to sell to or you have to convince. And it's not even just the CFO anymore that you have to convince of cost savings. But it's also the CEO and it's all the end users. Uh, a key part of deployment that um, our salespeople and our deployment team are always mentioning is trying to, to find fans, to find advocates of Google Apps within the company to make the transition smoother. So really getting everyone else on board is, is almost just as important as selling into you know, the IT decision maker and, and the CFO. We, we want to make sure that the employees are on board and that we're really leveraging um, all the goodwill we have on the consumer side with Gmail and Calendar and all of those apps and really leveraging that here with these companies to getting you know, the employees to spread the word internally. So we, of course, want to, make, we want to make it easy for them to do that. So the first uh, call to action here is to send an email or two. And so users who click on that, it's going to open their default mail client and pre-populate the email with a template here, uh, which it, they can send to their boss, they can send to their IT department, they can send it to a friend, a colleague, um, just a really quick and easy way that they can let other people know that they love Gmail and they think they should be using it at work. Um, they could certainly edit this template. They could erase it. They could start over. Uh, they could make it a little bit more customized. But uh, in either case, it's going to be a quick and easy way for them to get the word out. Um, they can also do internal marketing. So again, making sure that people internally know about the benefits of Gmail, of Calendar, of Docs is really key. And sometimes people you know, it, it helps to hand them something tangible, to give them a piece of paper that touts all of the benefits. And so we offer a couple different PDFs here. 
uh, that users can either send via email or download and print out. And it's just going to help them make the case for their company to go Google. Now, the third component of that landing page is the social media channels. And I want to talk a bit now about how we view social media. Uh, we, we certainly try to use all of these, these different channels, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. Um, but by and large, we have really found the most success on Twitter. We, uh, we have our own Twitter profile. We have an active following on Twitter. Um, and it seemed to be really the best place for us to leverage the momentum, get the word out, and really bring all of our fans and customers together uh, to speak as one. Now, I know that a lot of us might not know much about Twitter. We certainly have partners that are very active on Twitter. Uh, but I, I think it's still kind of a new, a new thing. And I want to make sure we all have a good foundation to understand what we're going to talk about. So a quick uh, couple slides on Twitter 101. First, what is it? It's an, it's an online place where you can keep in touch with people through the exchange of short, frequent posts or tweets of 140 characters or less. So that's kind of the key here. It's 140 characters max, including spaces. So these are very short exchanges. It's not an email. It's, it's a quick post or tweet, as they're called on Twitter, to let someone or let all of your followers know either what you're doing or let them know something like why you've gone Google. Uh, who sees your tweets? Anyone who's following you can see your tweets. And then you can also choose to follow anyone else you want. So we'll talk in a little bit. Um, actually, we'll talk right now about the Google at Work profile. So as I mentioned, we are very active in the Twitter community. Our official enterprise profile is Google at Work. And as I mentioned, Dana's with us today because she helps manage our Google at Work Twitter profile, uh, sending tweets, re retweeting other, other people's posts. Uh, and she'll talk in a little while about what our partners can do to really leverage Twitter. Uh, but we do have a pretty active following uh, for our Google at Work profile. We have six, over 16,000 followers. So certainly uh, when we retweet a post, it gets it a lot of um, impressions in the Twitter community, and a lot of people see them. Uh, now, what are hashtags? Um, these are kind of a Twitter convention. They're added in line to your post and are used as a way to tag your tweets and then easily group tweets around a specific topic. So you might have seen in some of our communications on this webinar that we've been using the hashtag, which is pound gong Google. And hashtags are really a great way to group stories. So now if all of the tweets have pound gong Google, you or anyone else can go to Twitter. You can do a search on pound gong Google. And then you're going to get the most recent results of all of the recent tweets that include Pound on Google in them. So by including Pound on Google in your tweet, we're essentially aggregating all of these stories so users can easily go to Twitter.com. They can see all of the tweets that include this hashtag, and then they can just easily scan through all the reasons why people are going Google. OK. So let's get back to our landing page for app spans that we talked about. So. Number three was spread the word. We're using all these social media channels, uh, especially Twitter. So on that landing page, the way we're making it extremely easy for users to spread the word on Twitter is when they click that icon, uh, the T, which is the Twitter icon, it's going to take them to Twitter, and it's going to pre-populate a post which, with the words, I've pound on Google, which is our hashtag, here's why. And it's an open prompt for personalization. So certainly they can delete this, and they can add in you know, their own format. But this was just a really easy way for users to just, in one click, get to Twitter, have a pre-populated tweet, and then quickly put in why they've gone Google. Uh, and I thought it'd be fun to share with everyone uh, what people are tweeting about. Uh, one of the more popular tweets uh, was the one you see here. It was from appforka.org. Has gone Google because the cost of Microsoft Office would employ a person for a month in Uganda. Uh, then from another one of our customers, I've gone Google from my hair to my feet. Easier life, I can deal with that. 
And then another fun one was from the Arizona Pain Specialists who have officially gone Google. They say, I can go home and sleep like a baby. Goodbye, exchange nightmares. So this is just a few. I mean, certainly when you're using social media channels like Twitter, you cannot control all of the tweets. And that's, um, that's kind of, you know, it's by design. By letting our customers speak out, you bring in the good with the bad. Uh, so certainly all of the, the posts have not been 100% positive, but a majority of them have been. And, and we certainly, when talking to the press, have been open about the fact that we, we know we're going to get some negative tweets. It's inevitable. It's, um, I think, one of the... The, the upsides to a platform like this is that you really get to hear how users feel. But overall, Twitter has been a, a great channel for us for this campaign to get the word out. And like I said, most of the tweets have been extremely positive. Um, so what can our partners do to join the conversation? Uh, I think Twitter is going to be the best place for our partners to really get involved with this Gone Google campaign. And if our sound's working, Dana's going to tell you a little bit about uh, what you can do as a partner to, to get onto Twitter and what the benefits are. Hey there. Yep. Thanks, Michelle. Yep. Hey, Dana. So I wanted to first go over, for those of you who aren't that familiar with Twitter or how you can use Twitter um, in general in your business communications besides just in partnership with us in our Gone Google campaign, Twitter actually has produced a great Twitter 101 business guide. So you can either you can either search um, for Twitter Business Guide or the URL is business.twitter.com slash Twitter 101. And just to give you a quick overview, one of the reasons that um, we've chosen to use Twitter as an outlet is the conversation that you can um, engage with uh, customers as well as a way to push news, um, customer stories, and, and feature releases, et cetera. Um, there are several businesses that have had success in using it as a, as a customer support vehicle, such as Zappos or JetBlue. Um, and, and there's a lot of other great examples on this business Twitter guide as far as how you can leverage this, uh, this communication platform in um, the rest of your business. But as far as how you can use it in relation to Google, we're always looking to um, retweet, uh, which is essentially rebroadcasting a message from any of our partner profiles, especially as it relates to Google Apps or, or other Google Enterprise products. Um, so if you um, haven't already, if we're not already following you and you have a Twitter profile, please just uh, hit a reply to us. So that's the at sign, Google at work, and that will send us a message saying, hey, we're a uh, Google partner, and um, would you please follow us? And that way we will receive your updates. And as we see things that are uh, worthy to be um, retweeted to our, our followers, uh, it, it's a great way for exposure for you since we would broadcast that message out to 16,000 uh, followers. And it's also a great way for us to promote your services as well. So um, we are following a, um, a few partners, I believe, today. But if, if we're not already, again, send us a message. Um, and as Michelle had mentioned before, leveraging that hashtag gone Google is another great way to make sure that um, your, your tweets as, as they relate to Google Apps and um, are included in the stream and in the conversation as, it's, as this has kind of grown out of just being a Google at work account type of hashtag and people are using it all across Twitter. Um, so the beauty of, of that hashtag is, again, it's not just limited to one or two Twitter profiles, but it's the entire Twitter community and, and all the stream of tweets. Um, so I think, as, I think that's a, it as far as different ways that you can get involved. And again, I, I would encourage, even if you're not using it for Gone Google, um, that, that you look at using Twitter as a vehicle in your marketing and uh, communication plans. Great. Thank you, Dana. Um, so as Dana mentioned, definitely let us know if, if your organization has a Twitter profile. Um, as she mentioned, you can tweet to us at the uh, Google at Work profile, and you can also feel free to send me an email. I'll be following up with all of our registrants after today's webinar, giving you a link to the recorded version. Uh, and the presentation. And I'll also provide the, the link to Business 101 on Twitter. So if you haven't started a profile, you can learn a little bit more about how to use Twitter for your business. Um, so when I email everyone, you can feel free to reply directly to me, and I can make sure. Um, so that's just one other way to let us know what your Twitter profile is, and I can make sure that gets to Dana. 
Um, and, and Dana's point there is a good one because we often retweet posts. So, um, you know, the way you can join the conversation really is about encouraging your customers to tweet, but also tweeting about your own customers who you've helped go Google and how you've helped them. And again, we have over 16,000 followers on Twitter. So if we know uh, your profile and, and we know you're one of our partners, we can, um, we don't retweet all posts, but we can be very diligent about trying to make sure we retweet our partner posts. And so it's going to be a really great way for you to get exposure for your company. So that kind of wraps up everything we're doing with the Gone Google campaign. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone about our focus, which is really on the customers. Um, again, it's in line with our brand, and it's a great way to communicate to the market that Google is enterprise ready by not only letting our customers speak for us, but highlighting some of our key customers with those case studies, uh, the PDFs, the videos. It's really a great way to um, kind of tout the benefits of Google Apps, but do it through the voice of our customers. Um, and then, you know, in line with spreading the word through our customers, just empowering them to evangelize Google Apps and making it easy for businesses or end users to really spread the word, evangelize apps within their organization, and convince others to also go Google. So remember what you can do. Um, we've talked about this a little bit in past webinars, but you can certainly create your own stories, and we strongly encourage it. Um, create your own case studies highlighting the customers you've helped Google, the benefits they've received, but also um, the services that you provided to them and how you helped them go Google. We post these stories on the Solutions Marketplace blog, and you can see the URL there. Uh, there's a link in the upper left-hand corner of the blog that is Learn More. And if you click there, you're going to be taken to a section that talks about um, our template for these success stories. And then there's also an alias that you can email them to, and we'll make sure they get posted on the Solutions Marketplace blog. Um, you can also look through other partner success stories that have been posted to get an idea of how they're writing them and what they're writing about. Um, but these are, again, a great way to um, highlight your business, promote your customers, promote the services that you provide to customers, um, and really kind of just increase awareness uh, for, for your organization. Secondly, just a reminder to please, please utilize the resources that are available in the Microsoft Exchange and Lotus Notes Resource Centers. Um, there's great third-party reports on cloud computing. There's data sheets and white papers on a lot of the tools, like AppSync uh, for Microsoft Outlook and the Lotus Notes tool that make it easier for customers to switch. There's all of the customer stories. And then you can just see how we're positioning apps to each of these audiences. The, the benefits that we're highlighting there are ones that we have found to resonate especially well with these audiences. So when you're marketing, when you're selling to, to these groups, that should give you kind of some sense of how to, how to form your message. And then lastly, uh, as Dana and I have been talking about, tweet about the customers that you've helped Google, and be sure that you use the hashtag pound on Google. That's going to make sure we see it. That's going to make sure that others see it and that you increase exposure for your company. Uh, and with that, I am going to take a look and see if we have any questions. Um, I'm, I'm happy to try to answer any questions about the Gone Google marketing campaign. Uh, please be sure to use the Q&A box in the bottom right hand of the screen. Uh, let's see. Are there any plans to pass leads generated here to your partners? Uh, not at the moment. So I think this is a larger awareness campaign. We're certainly trying to drive leads. We're also driving online signups. And we're also just trying to communicate to the community at large that you know, Google Apps is enterprise ready, that we have a number of uh, companies of all sizes that have switched. We have uh, more than 3,000 signing up every day. Uh, and so right now, it's not the focus is not on passing leads to partners. Um, I'm concerned that our marketing efforts will drive leads to Google uh, and not back to me. Are we able to ask customers where they heard about, about apps? Um, that, that's a bit of a challenge because when a customer goes to our website and they sign up online, then the conversion has happened. So there's not necessarily a place where we can intercept and ask them where they heard about Google Apps. Um, certainly, there are a lot of situations where our partners um, 
Excel apps in conjunction with our sales teams. And in those instances, yes, there's definitely a way that we can give credit to both our sales team and the partner. Um, I think the key here is really the relationships you build with your customers. Hopefully, uh, in, in teaching them about cloud computing and selling them Google Apps and really promoting the value-added services that you as a reseller are providing, it's going to make them want to go to a, to a trusted partner and want to stick with you. Uh, and, and certainly, as a lot of you might know, you can also, um, when partners are ready to, or I'm sorry, when customers are ready to renew, um, you can help them renew their Google Ads license fees, and that can, that's something that you can sell directly to them. Okay, it looks like that is all the questions on the campaign that we have for now. I will stay on and uh, I'll be here with Dana for a few more minutes in case anyone thinks of other questions you have about Twitter specifically or about the, the Don Google campaign um, at large. Uh, just a reminder that I'll be following up with everyone with a link to the webinar archive section on the solution provider site where a recorded version of this webinar and the presentation will be posted. Um, with that, it's almost the weekend, so I hope everyone has a great rest of the week. Thanks.